every day something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? So glad you can join us. Antigua celebrates 40th anniversary of independence amidst challenges. This story takes the lead in today's edition of Caribbean Perspective for Thursday, 4th November 2021. Details when we return. Conveniently located in the Grand Anne Shopping Center, for over 40 years, Food Fair has provided quality service at affordable prices. Now, grocery shopping is made easier and more convenient from the Food Fair web store. Hey, babe. Hmm? Listen, uh, I need you to go down to Food Fair to get some groceries. All right, no problem. Right away. Thanks, babe. What are you doing? You're supposed to be going to Food Fair to get a grocery, man. I am. But didn't you know you can order your groceries online from the Food Fair web store? Are you serious? Of course. All you have to do is just to log on to www.foodfair.gd with credit card in hand. And with an order of $100 or more, Food Fair Granans will deliver up to three miles away. And you don't even have to worry about your information, you know. The safety measures are excellent. So hold on. You just order online and Food Fair will deliver to you? Yep. Oh, baby, better hurry up and order, man. I already did. This should be here any minute now. Enjoy easy online shopping anytime from your home or office from the Food Fair web store. Food Fair, where you can fill your baskets without emptying your pockets. Welcome back. During Antigua and Barbuda's 40th anniversary of independence, Prime Minister Gaston Brown's independence address to the nation reaffirmed the theme Reflection, Resilience and Recovery. Ursula Charles of ABS News reports. Prime Minister, the Honourable Gaston Brown's independence address has taken on added significance as the country celebrates 40 years of political independence. The political leader implores the nation to be reflective, considering those who ensured progress we now enjoy. Our achievement of independence on November 1st, 1981, was the most decisive moment in our nation's history. Our people took charge of our own affairs, wresting them at last from the grip of a colonial power that for centuries kept previous generations either enslaved or exploited and in a state of underdevelopment. Brown outlines the resilience with which the government and all citizens have faced subsequent and current socioeconomic ills. Despite the socioeconomic ravages of COVID, our country still enjoys one of the highest per capita incomes in the Latin American and Caribbean region. There is a housing revolution taking place in our country, resulting in affordable, resilient housing that is far superior to what they were 40 years ago. Amid the pandemic, the Prime Minister points to instances of the nation's response. He says the country's leadership has a proven track record of resilience, specifically hailing a, quote, buoyant economy, high employment, increased investment, and general improvement in prosperity, end quote. Brown has admonished a partnership between the people and government of the country to ensure a solid recovery amid existential threats. The Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. observed, that, and I quote, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy, end of quote. We are determined to make the next 40 years even better and more prosperous for all. I wish you all a very happy 40th anniversary of our nation's independence as we reflect on the challenges and continue to soldier on resiliently towards a strong recovery. For ABS News on the 40th anniversary of independence, I'm Ursula Charles Jr. On day two of COP26, Barbados' Prime Minister Mia Motley joined U.S. President Joe Biden and President of the European Commission on the margins of the summit to discuss how infrastructure development will be an integral part of the fight against climate change. More in this Barbados Today news item. Motley made another plea for the world's big countries to address the climate crisis before it's too late. In an interview with CNN's Christiane Amapour, she said Barbados has already been impacted by the climate crisis despite its small carbon footprint. To begin with, we have a serious problem with water. Um, we have effectively 
drought-like conditions for the better part of the last few years where almost as half of the island is at risk of getting adequate water. Secondly, we have an impact with respect to our coral reefs. A lot of the marine life that we saw as children are no longer there. Thirdly, we have the possibility, of, and we're seeing it already, of salt water intrusion into some of our aquifers, making the water situation more dire. And then we have the sargassum seaweed as well on the east coast and of most of our countries from the very south in the region to the Gulf of Mexico. And this affects people who have restaurants or hotels or whatever because the smell is toxic. And that's because of the That's because of the climate, that's right. And of then, the water. And, and you have not heard me say floods or hurricanes. And those are the other ones as well. This year, Barbados had its first hurricane in 66 years. And before that, we had a freak storm for 90 minutes mm -hmm. that had 46,000 lightning strikes in 90 minutes. She added that the problem was not urgent for larger countries not being affected by the changing climate. I think people are getting there. The problem is that those who need to make the decisions are kicking the can down the road. And they believe that they can because they're not seeing us. Mm -hmm. They see themselves. Mm -hmm. And for them, they don't reach that period of peril probably for another 15, 20 years. I mean, you heard this morning, four degrees to Shanghai and Miami to go to be eradicated. Well, it's 1.5 and 2 for us. So there are a lot of us that are going to be affected before Shanghai and Miami. Former Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Sir James Mitchell, is under care at the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital in Kingstown. The Searchlight newspaper in St. Vincent and the Grenadines reports Sir James was transferred via Medivac vessel from Bequia Hospital on Saturday. He is said to have dengue hemorrhagic fever, which is causing other health issues. Sir James, now 90, has been battling a litany of health woes. These include gallstones, pain and vomiting, a urinary tract infection, there was evidence of kidney failure and he has an enlarged prostate. He also fell four months ago. His daughter, Louise Mitchell, confirmed the dengue diagnosis, saying all of the other issues were related to it. Now that they know he has dengue, they know that that has been the cause of all of those organs being affected, she said. So now that there is this diagnosis, they can treat him much better because they know exactly what they're dealing with. He's looking a bit brighter than he did earlier on in the diagnosis. He's communicating very well and he has lots of praise for the doctors and nurses that have been looking after him and he's very grateful for all the love and support he's getting from people. The hurricane season is now upon us, so we as Caribbean people need to remember to think safety and be prepared. Avoid venturing outside during a storm or hurricane, especially if there are strong winds. Rooftops and other debris are often blown about and can cause great damage. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. The United Workers' Party in St. Lucia is not letting up in its opposition to the SLP administration's confinement orders in the absence of a state of emergency declaration. Opposition leader Alan Chastany claims it's an attack on civil liberties. Solange Alfred of HTS News Force has more. So it's all good and well for politicians to talk about transparency and accountability, but it's not the words that matter. It's actually what actually follows that matters. Leader of the opposition, Alan Chastney, continues to apply pressure on the ruling SLP administration. The UWP has argued against the revocation of the state of emergency and the use of the COVID-19 Act to impose curfew or confinement orders. Chastney has raised concerns over the constitutionality of the current regulation of restrictions and the impact on civil liberties. The UWP leader, who is still overseas, was addressing virtually a press conference held by the opposition party at Colony House on Thursday. What is worrying to me and what is worrying to many people of United Workers Party supporters is the hypocrisy that is taking place. That the same persons who wanted to say that the COVID Act was an infringement on people's rights, even though we said it did not apply to 
a curfew, will now either stand in public and support the COVID Act's ability to do that, or worse yet, say nothing. Shastney claims during his tenure, the former UWP administration chose the path less traveled, and the decision, albeit unpopular, was in keeping with the Constitution. The United Workers Party stands firm in its decision that when we had to impose a curfew, that we did it the more difficult way, we did it the way in which the people of this country's rights were held in the highest esteem. And our actions reflected the severity of the need to curtail people's civil liberty. But some members of the legal fraternity in St. Lucia say the former prime minister is out of his depth on the act that, ironically, his ex-UWP administration pushed through parliament despite the warning of civil society of its immense power, short of the constitutional implications of a state of emergency declaration. Even president of the Bar Association, Rene St. Rose, recommended that the leader of the opposition, Alain Chastney, quote, reconsider his statement, unquote, some regard as foolhardy. But Chastney insists he has got it right. To say nothing. And this is the greatest risk that we run as a young country, is when we're not scared, we're not brave enough to challenge the status quo. When we ourselves only want to defend our rights when it's politically expedient to do so. That is the problem. So I want to say, and I want to end at this point, that we will continue to advocate and do everything we possibly can to defend the civil rights of the people of St. Lucia to defend the right processes when it comes to the implementation of our constitution and when it comes to governing in our country. So, as Alfred, HCS News Force. Conveniently located in the Grand Anne Shopping Center, for over 40 years, Food Fair has provided quality service at affordable prices. Now, grocery shopping is made easier and more convenient from the Food Fair web store. Hey, babe. Hmm? Listen, I need you to go down to food fair to get some groceries. All right, no problem. Right away. Thanks, babe. What are you doing? You're supposed to be going food fair to get a grocery, man. I am. But didn't you know you can order your groceries online from the food fair web store? Are you serious? Of course. All you have to do is just log on to www.foodfair.gd with credit card in hand. And with an order of $100 or more, food fair granites will deliver up to three miles away. And you don't even have to worry about your information, you know. Their safety measures are excellent. So hold on. You just order online and Food Fair will deliver to you? Yep. Oh, baby, better hurry up and order, man. <laughs> I already did. They should be here any minute now. Enjoy easy online shopping anytime from your home or office from the Food Fair web store. Food Fair, where you can fill your baskets without emptying your pockets. I am Eddie Frederick. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please continue to log on to CaribbeanPerspective.com for more daily news and more.